Previously on Smart Mobility Today, we focused on AI, robot labor, EV charging, battery production, imaging in deep space, and deep in the ocean. Plus, Nathan Keelan talked to Hitachi Astomo's Jim Castellano about electrification. This week's stories focus a lot on EVs globally, the speed of EV charging, solar wind and recycling, electric air mobility, robotic dogs, and robotic medical devices. You've got something to say, and we can help you say it. Detroit Media Productions is here for your audio, photography, and video needs. DetroitMediaProductions.com Hi, this is Cindy Polakowski. As part of its long competition with Tesla, Mercedes announced some good news at a North American dealer event in Vancouver. The German luxury and commercial auto manufacturer says that in 2024, it plans to deliver a new all-electric compact CLA sedan that will compete with Tesla's Model 3, as well as an electric GLC crossover that is intended to cut into the Tesla Model Y market. The CLA sedan will be larger than its internal combustion engine counterpart and delivers up to 400 miles in range. The GLC crossover is expected to have a range of 300 miles on a charge, and it replaces the Mercedes EQC crossover, EV that was canceled due to its short charge range of 220 miles. In the UK, the county of Somerset will be the new location for a multi-billion pound EV battery plant, creating thousands of jobs. According to the BBC Jaguar Land Rover parent company, Tata Group is confirming a deal that will result in a new factory based in the UK rather than Spain. The UK versus Spain question has been a topic for speculation for some time. The report says that the chair of Tata will meet with Prime Minister Rishi Sunak in the middle of next week. Last week, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt hinted that the deal was imminent, saying, quote, All I would say is watch this space because we are very focused on making sure the UK gets the EV manufacturing capacity. The new plan is expected to create 9,000 jobs. In Sweden, Volvo Group announced that it has sold 1,000 battery electric trucks to Holcomb of Switzerland. Volvo also announced that it is making progress in its effort to commercialize hydrogen-powered fuel cell versions. The company's fuel cell trucks, tested on public roads, will soon include commercial haulers. Issues like finding supplies of green hydrogen and building a hydrogen refueling infrastructure are part of what the company has to address as Volvo moves toward the sale of fuel cell trucks within the decade. Holcomb, which operates in 60 countries, will use the battery electric trucks to move building materials such as cement and ready-mix concrete. The European Association for Electromobility announced that France has reached the goal of establishing 100,000 public charging stations for EVs. The initial moderate goal, part of France's effort to accelerate a sector deemed critical for fighting climate change, is a first step toward installing 400,000 charging points by 2030. With this milestone announcement, France is now behind the Netherlands in terms of deploying public charging stations. Prior to 2020, France was averaging less than 5,000 new public charging stations each year. Today, the country is seeing nearly 4,000 stations every month. Hitachi Estemo is helping OEMs drive towards sustainability with their electrification technologies. Learn more at am.hitachiestemo.com. At this week's Global Automobility Powering Electric Vehicles event, attendees heard experts from Toyota, Hitachi Astemo, Comcast Business, and the Michigan Office of Future Mobility and Electrification. They addressed questions like, what will it take to power these vehicles? How far can I drive? Will the grid really hold up? What is the impact on the environment? The event culminated with the presentation of the inaugural Global Automobility Industry Innovation Award. The honor went to David E. Cole, Ph.D., Chair Emeritus of the Center for Automotive Research. The event organizers and sponsors recognized Cole's long and distinguished career, ranging from his time at the University of Michigan Engineering School 
to his years leading and growing the Center for Automotive Research. Dr. Cole has been a key innovator and leader in the industry that has seen a great change over the decades. And through it all, he has built a reputation as a creative, inventive problem solver, said Dan Keelan, global automobility publisher, while announcing the award. A very practical question coming from prospective EV owners is this. How long will it take to charge? Because until it compares to that of gassing up a traditional car, consumers will hesitate. While refueling a gas tank only takes a few minutes, charging an EV takes a lot longer. Of course, the difference between level one and level three charges are considerable. A level three unit can charge a battery to 80% as quickly as 20 minutes. But for most consumers with more affordable level two and level three chargers, the time commitment runs from several hours to a couple of days. Adding these slow charging speeds to range anxiety, influencing the way consumers think. A Forbes wheel survey of 500 current EV owners said that they are frequently or always have a concern about how far they can drive on a charge, a charge that takes too long to begin with. Pushing the technology of charging gets us closer to closing the gap, but has to be balanced against battery safety and battery life considerations. Power sources like wind and solar are critical pieces to achieving a U.S. power grid that can support increasing numbers of electric vehicles. As the demand grows, there are concerns that unless addressed, could outweigh the benefits of reducing our dependence on fossil fuels, lowering carbon emissions, and mitigating climate change. The issue is this. It it won't be long before these growing renewable energy sources are generating tons of waste, including millions of photovoltaic solar panels, wind turbines, and lithium-ion EV batteries. The waste expected to be generated from wind and solar will only increase These energy sources combined generated 13.6% of utility-scale electricity last year, and those numbers will only grow in coming years. Fortunately, the problem becomes an opportunity for some as startups work to create a sustainable process that recovers, recycles, and reuses these components. For example, a wind turbine is recyclable from the steel tower to the composite blades, typically 170 feet long but most of the materials end up being thrown away. A waste total that will reach a cumulative mass of 2.2 million metric tons by 2050. And about 90% of end of life or defective solar panels also end up in landfills, largely because it is cheaper to dump them than to recycle them. We will be right back. (laughs) We'll be right back. With the largest gig network in the country, Comcast Business has the technology solutions to future-proof your network. AI is going to be critical in real-time route planning for Flyv Bird, an on-demand sustainable regional air mobility carrier. The flyer says it will begin operations in Europe with an initial fleet of the Technom P2012 Traveler aircraft. According to Flyv Bird founder and Volocopter Air Services CEO, Tomislav Lang, AI is, quote, magic juice. The technology will help the aviation company determine perfectly efficient routes every day, and their goal is to fly faster than a train or car, but at the same cost, moving along an adaptable route system, constantly changing as the AI adjusts to changing demand. The company also hopes to capitalize on its ability to fly into airports with runways less than 900 meters long and offer aviation services to markets that are not served today. In Los Angeles, the City Council has approved a $278,000 robotic dog. The approval came despite some, quote, grave concerns from dissenting council members who worry that the mechanized creatures could turn against people. The Boston Dynamics manufactured device is called the Quadruped Unmanned Ground Vehicle. 
and was donated to the L.A. Police Department by the Los Angeles Police Foundation. The council voted 8-4 to four to accept the robot dog, which is unarmed but has surveillance technology. At the meeting, members of the public urging a no vote warned that the machine could violate residents' civil rights. Researchers at University of Colorado Boulder have engineered tiny robots that can zip through liquids at high speeds. They hope to use them to deliver prescription drugs inside the human body. The idea of micro-robots delivering medication or performing non-invasive surgeries would mean less cutting patients, simply getting an injection or swallowing a pill, and let miniature robots perform procedures. The micro-robots measure only 20 micrometers wide and are several times smaller than the width of a human hair. They are capable of traveling at speeds of 3 millimeters per second or roughly 9,000 times their own length per minute. In an early test, a fleet of these robots were able to transport doses of dexamethasone, a common steroid medication, to the bladders of lab mice, giving hope to humans suffering from painful bladder syndrome. Read these stories and more at globalautomobility.com and subscribe to Smart Mobility today on your favorite podcast platform. Sign up to receive our weekly newsletter and follow us on social media at Smart Mobility Today. Produced by Detroit Media Productions, this is Smart Mobility Today.